I'm blocking all signals within these four walls. I wouldn't want us to be interrupted. interrupted. Who are you and what do you want? He made me call you. He said he'd hurt us if we didn't. Mark. He was talking to me. If Let don't them go it. now. Ooh. I'll kill the boy quickly. No! Not very smart. Oh. So what are you doing now? I'm trying to save the world. Your son is the monster. One go on, one go on, people, them. Ah, uh, it is being like animation central up in here, or at least otherworldly central up in here. Watching Avatar, the finale of that, watching the latest episode of X Men '97, which is sick. Um, and now we're going to watch the uh, final episode of season two of Invincible. So, this is episode eight. I thought you were stronger. So, this episode, from what I can remember from the last one. Uh, everything was kind of going to crap, basically. Mark and Amber have basically decided they can't continue what they're doing. The last scene was the guy, the black dude, the bulbous head. Um, he's now back in the scene and it looks like he's finally landed in current Mark's world. It looks like anyway, I could be wrong. I'm not quite sure what this now means. I'm not quite sure how they're going to deal with this. Um, the last episode was a good one though. Like it was a really, really good episode. So let's see how. Oh, I kind of don't want to watch it because I'm like, there's gonna be nothing left after this. I got nothing left. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's see what. Let's see how they kind of bring it home. I've heard rumors of a Viltrumite prison somewhere in space. Maybe they took him there. Uh, I know. Hello, Mark. When are you coming home? Can you imagine? <laughs> It was the Omni Man, right? Yeah. Hey, Nolan. Mm -hmm. It seems you've passed inspection. Finally fit for your execution. Imagine him, we're like, no, 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 we think he's just perfect for when we like, what? That's far enough. There's a chance you could kill me before I snap her neck. I'm not sure. Oh, my God. You could try if you like. I'm blocking all signals within these four walls. I wouldn't want us to be interrupted. interrupted. Who are you and what do you want? He made me call you. He said he'd hurt us if we didn't. Mark. He was talking <laughs> to me. If you Let don't him go it. now. You're lucky. You're lucky, bud. You're lucky. Wait. <sighs> But you best fly back through there, though, if you leave you there. Oh, that looks like it actually is gone, though. Oh, it's actually taking you back to the dinosaur era. We can share. I smelled it first. It's mine. Stay back. No one's eating me. <laughs> as long as I don't determine that the only way to hurt you is to hurt them. So do them a favor and die. Oliver! <gasps> No! <laughs> what is this? You're okay, Oliver. It's gonna be okay. There's no way to know that for sure. What kind of mother lies to her son like that? <laughs> Don't. One wrong move and they fall. I've got a dimension all picked out where the ground is eight stories lower than it is here. But I remember that night. You were trying to save me. <sighs> Maybe the accident changed you, but you were a good person trying to do a good thing. After all the pain and suffering you've caused, the lives you've taken, <laughs> I won't build my utopia with blood! Daddy, I'm 
miss mommy. Me too, man. Oh, poor Angstrom. <laughs> I'll kill the boy quickly. No! The ring really hates him. Why is it evil? It's... Why is it evil in all these different worlds? Wow. Oof. Oof. It's over. It'll never be over. You can't hurt me with that. We're doing my head in as well, to be fair. Like, I get why he's so upset, but he's the wrong person. Now we're in The Walking Dead. I didn't learn how long his kind can go without food. Oh! oh. Don't you hit our Debbie. Oh! Not very smart. Please. You think you're innocent in all this? In so many other dimensions, you join your husband and son when they slaughter millions and make the earth burn. Oh, that's why you're so angry. Because you turned out rotten here, and Mark is the hero for once. You don't know anything! Oh! oh. oh. So what are you doing now? I'm trying to save the world. Your son is the monster. Okay. I'm oh my going God. to make your son hurt. But you're the good I'm guy. I'm gonna make you hurt. I'm even gonna make this child hurt. Another portal as soon as I come out with no gap in between them, so it's just a tunnel. It just keeps flitting in from place to place. <laughs> Mom. Oh. It's invincible, mate. You ain't gonna beat invincible. I'm gonna watch you. <laughs> He's gonna hate himself for this. But bro, what choice did you have, man? What choice did you have? This guy was not gonna stop. I thought you were stronger. Who? You thought he was stronger? And also, where is he stuck now? Where is he? Oh my gosh, her arm, her eye. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Mark, it wasn't your fault, I had man. To. I didn't have a choice. You didn't? I had to kill him. I hope this isn't at the start of his like, villain arc. Maybe. <laughs> He's going mad. <laughs> this has actually broken him. I kind of won. <laughs> the council states that in order for a Viltrumite to be executed, 
He must be whole and intact. Scum. Hey, just cut me some slack. Jeez. Exciting. Okay. All right, Ellen. But you're invincible. You can just fly to another planet or something. Well, he done it this time, Mark Grayson. Maybe his body could somehow still. Oh. Huh? Whoa. Ah. Thank you. Eve, is that you? Just. It just happened. Maybe for you. For us, it was 20 years ago. It took us that long to find this dimension. Luckily, wow. by that time, there were four working time machines in Guardian custody. The world we come from, the world where you've been missing all these years, it's not good. I don't know if I would have survived here. You did, but you wouldn't like what you had become. Mark, wait. I love you, Mark. Eve. I... No, don't tell me. Tell her. I suppose you weren't paying attention when we discussed not damaging the time stream. <laughs> Shut up, Rex. Thanks, Cecil. I appreciate everything. Always. Aww. His mom? Is it over? <sighs> oh, Mark. <laughs> if the bad guys are dead and the good guys are alive, that's a good day. How do you know the difference? All the bad guys are usually ones who break people's arms. You're not him. Is she mom? I mean... Need any help? Making a sandwich? She's still beefing about this whole... I'm sorry, I, I was just... Can we talk? Make it fast. My bread's getting soggy. Amanda, <clears throat> I'm still learning to navigate the world of in-person interactions. Well, it shows. I care for you, so I wanted to fix your problem. I'm sorry if along the way I became a problem myself. As apologies go, I... that's not a bad one. I'm glad that's been squashed. Because my... what do you, I mean? Like, I'm just... I'm just trying to help, ma'am. I'm trying to help. Oh, this is, um, we've been set, uh, immortal. And he's home. Immortal? Huh? <gasps> I'm sorry, I never told you. I always kept hidden. And lived through a copy. Just in case. <laughs> wow. I was so tired of dying. That's crazy. Imagine I'm sorry, I didn't so... tell you sooner. It's okay. Aww. Everything's okay. Jane. Who's Jane? Where'd you get your powers from anyway? Grandma on my mom's side. Yeah, not a lot of opportunity back then for women like us if you weren't willing to wear a bathing suit 24-7. I would not want to be going in there. Shit! Whoa. Who'll be that? Oh, Dad. Oh, gosh. Bow to go! That looks like I am on rock. <laughs> Wait, you're both female. I'm strong enough, and I can do this. It's all I ever wanted for as long as I can remember. I want to do what you do. I want to be just like you. You will be, son. You will. <laughs> every fragile, insignificant being on this planet. I'm not my dad.
April, can you get Oliver ready for bed? Of course. Things are going to be different now, aren't they? I was starting to feel like we were getting close to some version of normal. I'm quitting college. <gasps> Mark. It doesn't make sense. I'm missing all my classes, and the more I think about it, what's the point? I have to get better. I have to be better. Do you understand? Mark. Do you? I do. This is what separates you from your dad, bro. Men in that control. But you know I'm always here for you. If you ever need a shoulder, I, I've got two. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I know. There's something else I want to talk to you about. Okay. And that soft breeze and the wind and the hair. It's nothing. I'm sorry. You're not going to talk to about it? <clears throat> sure. His head's not in the right space. I'm sorry, Mark. Bless him. He doesn't. Yo, no. yo, <laughs> yo, Dublin, yo, yo. <laughs> I'm here, alien. Oh, come on, man, it's Alan. <laughs> Turned against the Empire. Mark told me all about it. But you saw Mark? Yes, on Earth, I came to enlist him in the Coalition's fight against your old pals. Let the boy have a moment of peace. Let me pay for what I did. What I did on Earth. The pain and destruction I caused was immeasurable. Mm. I deserve death. Oh, God. <laughs> and yet... What is it? I think... I miss my wife. Which wife is he talking about? Well, it's got to be Debbie because um, uh, the other lady, I can't remember her name, is no longer with us. So it's got to be, it's got to be Debbie he's talking about. I mean, you would hope it's Debbie he's talking about after all of that. Oh, dear. Well, what an episode. What an episode, man. Wow, wow, wow. First of all, can we just give it up for the actor that plays um, Angstrom Levy in this, uh, who's Randall in This Is Us. My, is it Michael P. Brown? Sterling K. Brown, that's who it is. I think they've all done a really good job, actually, the voice actors and stuff. But no, brilliant cast. Um, so yeah, so Sterling K. Brown, I think, again, fantastic voice acting for Angstrom. The difficult part for me with this whole storyline is that despite the fact that Mark committed or versions of Mark committed these atrocities, it's really clear that this Mark didn't. I know he's blaming Mark for what happened to him and stuff, but realistically, like, he didn't do that. Like, it was his machine. You decided to save me. You ripped off your helmet, you know, and it was that decision that, that caused the malfunction and you to have this pink in the brain head like so you can't blame him for so much and also again it, it's difficult because when someone looks it, it, it for all intents and purposes is the same person bar a different timeline it'd be really difficult to see the person that caused the death of your child and be like yeah i'm going to just let that slide or your partner or countless others, you know, when he was just going walking around and just knocking people's heads off for jokes and, you know, toying with him, all that kind of stuff. I get it. That's going to be difficult. But the lengths that he would go to when he's saying that, you know, he's not the bad guy, but that Mark is the bad guy. But bro, look what you're doing. You're keeping a mother and a child hostage. Even if you wanted to get to this person, you're talking about, I'm going to hurt your son and I'm going to hurt you and I'm going to hurt the chat. Like, what point of that is a, a nice hero that's riding in on horseback with the light behind you? That's, that's not happening. So I think 
that was a bit tenuous, really, for me to be like, mm, that's for all of the things that, you know, bearing in mind this is the last time we're going to see him after not seeing him the entire season. I was expecting him to have been building something for a really long time and he wasn't really. So, do you know what I mean? Like, because we saw him in the first season, the first episode, sorry, I thought the other episodes that we weren't seeing him, he would have been preparing something and getting something ready. And I guess he's saying that you know the doctors made him superhuman and stuff, but even that, I would have thought there was more, this big reveal that you're finally in episode eight. As, it, it could have, this could have been in episode three, really, you know? But anyway, like that, this, this is where he turned up. I thought, um, as you can probably see from my reaction, I'm very much, when it comes to mums in general and anything happening to anybody's mum, that's me. I'm all over that, like, heart in mouth. So when he grabbed her arm and snapped it in two, I, I couldn't cope with that. Sorry, that's that's his mum. But how many man can handle this? The, 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 the rest of the superhero can handle this. This is just a human mother that's holding his brother and you're and you're punching her and and snapping her her arm and stuff that wasn't cool and i rate mark because again he's trying to get hold of him to be like you need to stop portaling me to all these different places so i can just get a hold of you and let my family go which is another reason why when he eventually did get hold of him and he lost it i can understand why like this he's beating himself up because he's like oh i lost control but surely in any situation, if someone is, is is putting you at risk and putting your family at risk, isn't that the one time where you can actually stand to lose control? This guy has flounced him all across the multiverse, dinosaurs, upside down, rabid gangs, beating him, that skeletal looking guy. Like he has been up and down all over the place. And again, not knowing how long it's been and not knowing what's happened to his mum or his brother. And then when he actually does see what's happened to them, she's got a black eye, her arm is completely mangled. After seeing Oliver's head hit the floor, mate, th this is the kind of fight that you don't pick. And you, we see it all the time on things like Instagram or whatever, when you get like someone who picks on the wrong person, it's like you, I, I, Angstrom, I get it. Like you've got a lot of angst and a lot of bitterness towards your situation and everything because of what's happened in previous multiverses but you can't just decide I'm going to take all of my upset and anger out on this one who actually is a good person but then like Mark said maybe the experiment that whatever he was doing changed him so his brainwaves aren't computing to know that he has he has actually changed and become someone really quite cruel and actually the absolute antithesis of what he's trying to and act his revenge upon when it comes to Mark. So I thought that was... And the fact that Mark just, just kept going on about the fact he lost control. I get he's triggered by his dad and everything his dad did, but he isn't, he isn't only man and he didn't do these things because he was given some mission to do them. He did these things because he, he had to. If he had let him go, he would have continued to torture Debbie and the baby and him. So I think he definitely needs to give himself some slack. And I think it's a bit like, it's a bit like Superman, isn't it? And the whole Superman argument, the fact that he never crosses that line. And then there's that whole thing where he does cross that line because I guess Joker does the one thing that would send him over the edge, which is to harm Lois Lane. And that's where he turns into supreme ruler of the planet and do, 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 like that's the Superman that none of us want. And I, th and I feel it's a bit like that and why we're saying that this could be the start of his arc because I guess once you've done it once, who to say that it's not something that you wouldn't do again? But again, it's the circumstances. And I think there are certain circumstances where that threat has to be annihilated because what else are you going to do? You're going to... He's already ripped off her arm. Like that... I'm telling you now, you even look at my mum in the wrong way and I'm I'm a lover. I'm definitely not a fighter. That's not my thing at all. But I will find... It. I will juck out, take my keys and juck out you. Hey, listen. <laughs> you don't mess with mums. So, for me, it's completely justified. And I think Cecil was really good in trying to, you know, really reinforce that and remind him that you didn't have a choice. It's not the same. When he got to see his mum and, you know, she's all mash up in the bed and the arm all mangled and the eyes all big and 
And he just curls up in a ball next to her because the, he's just, he's still just that, he's a boy, man. That's his mom, and he can't really reconcile with what he's done, and just needs that love and support. Interesting when the other guardians came, and they were all older, and the fact that Eve was like. I'm not going to say nothing, but then in right at the end, like, look, I love you. I should have told you before. Tell me you love me back. Well, tell me you don't, but tell me something. I guess because his head is so fried at the moment, he's not able to really think of anything and deal with anything. So I can kind of get why he didn't want to talk to about it. But then I'm also like, I hate those people. They're like, I've got something to tell you. Actually, never mind. Don't open your mouth then. Oh, but, he, but he, again, can be forgiven. He's going through a very traumatic time. And she was absolutely right as well that he doesn't deserve this. He just, out of, out of all the characters, all he tries to do is his best. And season after season, he's just pummeled, man. He, his dad's abandoned him after beating him, after leaving his mum and, and, and dead enough to other guardians and battering him to, to death, almost to death. Then finding out that his dad's father's this whole other family that actually is alive. And that he's this Vulcanite race that wants to come and enslave the planet. He wants to go to uni and can't do any of that kind of his girlfriend. His girlfriend's threatened. That that has to be over. There's this other potential person that he thought was just his friend. And now he finds out he's, he's in love. She's in love with him. So now it's like, well, actually, do I, do, do I go down that path and lose a friend potentially? But that's another bit of extra stuff that I don't need to, that I don't really want to think about. I've got all these battles where I'm actually getting battered by people physically, battered into the ground. I've just recovered from the other village not coming to town. If we don't do what you need to, what we need you to do, we're going to mash up the whole thing. My dad's now on trial to be executed. I've got this intergalactic plan to try and help them, but I can't even go there. So that's an added bit of pressure. Um, and now I want to deal with the fact that this person come and terrorise my family and I've ended up ending them and now I've got to live with the guilt of that with the blood of love man. Like, there are so many things on that poor boy's mind. It's such a shame. Um, but I do really like how they're telling this story and I think w what's really good about this show as well is there's a, there's a, there's a real... I don't know how to describe it, like a sense of... L of lightness and humour about their love for this kind of genre, like the superhero genre. You can kind of hear it in how they have certain... Like, for example, that when Kahar, Kahar came up looking like something straight out of Thundercats, like, that that was a mumbra to me, that, that 100%. And that whole pause being like, you're not, you're not men. Like, what, that, that whole... There's so many moments in it where I can just hear that humour, that very kind of deadpan straightforward I'm just gonna I'm talking to you bro like bro they're gonna execute you bro <laughs> like that like you can hear it and I just think that's quite when you when when things are so brutal like that whole fight that was happening with with um Mark and everything that happened with him and then it went to Nolan he was getting punched in the face and there's just so much brutality in this show, but then it, there, there were moments of this kind of levity, like, and I think that is what makes it so different. Because if you're watching something like X Men or, or well, the new X Men does have some levity in it, actually, which I think is quite cool, and it might pick up something from Invincible. I don't know, but um, old school X Men and definitely things like I don't know the DC universe, when it comes to DC animated movies, you don't get much humour, really, in those. I mean, it might be the odd, lame, cheesy joke, but this is... There's, there's actual relatable humour in this show, which I think is really, really cool. Again, I think the animation is really cool. I'm so bought into the animation of this show. Um, and I just think the acting, the voice acting in it is brilliant. You know, when Mark is zooming across the, the sky and like he's just, he's, he, you can you can feel the despair. You can feel the absolute despair and not knowing what to do. So, I really really enjoyed it. I really 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 enjoyed it. I'm so gripped and 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 now I'm like I don't even know what the next part's going to be, because the first season was all about trying to find out what is going on and why did Omni Man do all of this, to now finding out why he did all of this and how that's kind of come to the to the fore. And now I'm like, well, how does this even resolve itself? I don't. I still don't really quite understand the thing about the prison for the Viltrumites or the weapon, or the person that could wield the weapon. Um, I'm still a little bit confused by that. But um, 
And then for it to end with Nana being like, I think I miss my wife. I mean, I feel as though that's going to that's going to be some kind of conversation in the next season. Clearly, otherwise it wouldn't have been said. But I can't imagine Debbie being like, "Yeah, cool." You called me your pet, absolutely not. So yeah, great episode, great way to finish the season. Really, just feel really bad for Mark. Um, I'd love to know what because again, I don't, I didn't follow this cartoon or comic. I don't know if it's either uh, before this show. So if there are any thoughts, without any spoilers, that people want to share, then by all means, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. What do you? Th- what was your favourite episode in the in the season, actually? Um, does anyone know when the next season will be out? When it's even penned for? Yeah, I've definitely got some questions. But if you could drop me a like and subscribe, I'd be really, really grateful for that. And if you do want to watch the full episode with me, and the full reaction with me as well, then come on over to Patreon, um, and I will welcome you with open arms. Open arms. Yeah, but for now, thanks so much for watching, and uh, I guess I will see you on the next one.